Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. For login, there are two fields in which you know we can make the entry, username and password, correct? In the fund transfer, we have the from to amount and frequency. Outside the bank, it is from to amount, then frequency, transaction, description. In the account summary, it is date, description, types, and then uh, status, and then amount, and then the balance available. Is it clear, everybody, what we try to do? Yes, everybody. Any confusion till here? No, right? Okay. Next thing. Okay. Now, Madhuri, what you do is, okay, mm -hmm. only consider the fields in which you can type in the data. For example, if you are selecting or if it is radio button, remove those. If it is a date picker, remove them. If you are directly editing from your keyboard, you are entering the input from the keyboard, only keep those fields remaining you got to delete okay. or you copy it okay you copy it and then delete it you copy this entire part below no copy right from fr001 all the three no you copy the complete thing simply okay. copy paste it instead of writing okay. no right from the beginning fr001 all the lines you copy paste it again yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, now just put a line over there so that we can uh, make it separate. You can use a hash. Hmm, exactly. Okay. Now what you do is you start eliminating the fields wherein, you know, we cannot uh, type in the data. For example, in the login username and password, we are going to type in the data. So let them remain. From, it is a drop down, right? Yes. Delete it. Remove it. Two is also drop down. Delete it. Yes. Amount is wherein you got to enter the value. Type in the value, right? So we got to have it. Yes. Then outside the bank also do the same thing. Okay, so what we are doing is, we are trying to keep the fields wherein we can type in the data. Clear everybody? From the keyboard, we are typing in the data and we are only retaining those fields and remaining I am asking her to delete. Balance available? Am I going to write that? No. Okay, then remove it. So what about the date? Can I type in or it is like a date picker? I think it is a date picker, right? You got to uh, open the calendar and then you pick the date? Yes. Okay. Fine. So now these are the editable fields. Okay. Because now for this, we are going to go for the next stage. After we have the test requirements, the next thing is test data design. Okay. So the next part of this, you know, test design is the data design that we are going to do and for that we will be only considering the fields in which we can type in the data okay Rani wants me to repeat I'm going to repeat it okay what we did was from each of the requirement we picked up all the fields okay which are the input fields basically all the fields okay 
which he did. For example, in the login, it is username and password. Funds transfer, it is from to amount and frequency. Right, and then account summary, we have the date, description type, etc. Okay, she picked all the input fields. Now, we are going to consider only the fields in which we are going to type in the data. We remove this from and to because it is a drop down wherein I can only select. Is it possible, you know, that user can enter any data that he wants there? He cannot enter. Correct? He should only select the data that is available. Means there is no chance for him to make any kind of error. But when it is an open field, like, you know, username, he can type anything from his keyboard. If it is the amount, okay? No doubt he has to type only the numerical data, but it is an open field. He can type anything from his keyboard. Correct? So now in that case, we got to do the validation there. We have to prepare a data whether to accept the data that is entered by the user or not. Okay. And now we are going to start with the data design. And for the data design, this is a preparation that we got to do. Pick all the input fields in which we are going to enter the data. Is it clear, everybody? What we did? We just picked all the input fields wherein the user can type in the data. Any doubts? Shall we proceed further then? Okay, Madhuri, thank you. Okay, and what you can do is do the modifications which I have suggested you. Okay, then I will tell you how to do the data design at that one. And then after writing the test case, you can send across this document to me and I'll be sharing it with all the people. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now back to my screen again. Okay. So the next step is what? Preparation of the test data. Okay. Wait, let me... So we are here. We prepared the list of requirements that is over. Our checklist of the requirements is ready. Now we got to prepare the test data for each of the requirement. Okay. And for that what we do? We first have to select from each of the requirement what is the data for which we are going to prepare the test data. Alright. We are going to pick the fields that we did just now. And there are certain techniques for you know the preparation of the data basically when it is login username and password we will be getting the data directly from the client the client will you know tell us what are the valid usernames and password using which we can enter into the application okay or sometimes we also get it from a database developer or you know the previous application the legacy systems we can get the data in case all those, all those are not available and we got to prepare our data on our own, then we got to use certain techniques. Okay. Let's see what those techniques are. Okay. Now I'll consider an example. Our, okay, where is our... Okay, so this was the example that we were considering yesterday and we have the username over here which is alphanumeric lowercase between 4 to 8 characters. Password is alphabet in lowercase between 4 to 8 characters. Now we are going to learn two techniques to prepare the data. Okay, so the first thing that I will be doing here is I will write down the specification. Let me write it down. For the username I will consider. So what kind of data this username is going to accept? Alphanumeric, lowercase, okay, and 4 to 8 characters, right? This is the specification that we have got. From where did I get this? Directly from the requirement document. Alphanumeric in lowercase between 4 to 8 characters. The same thing I considered. Okay. 
this is an illustration okay so don't go on special characters and all those things I'm not going to complicate it we are going to keep it simple I make two section over here the first part is the type of the data right first part is what this is a type of the data this is the size of the data okay and for the type of the data I'm going to apply a technique that is called as equivalence class partition okay for size of the data I am going to apply a technique which is called as boundary value analysis now why we are doing all this is okay when the field is open like that I mean when the user can enter anything that he wants okay he can enter anything but we should make sure if he enters the invalid data we should not allow him to proceed further we should display an error message over there means we should try to clearly differentiate between what is the valid data what is the invalid data okay so that we can make a decision regarding the next step okay so for that we are going to prepare the data over here clearly we'll be mentioning whether the data he is going to enter it is a valid it is correct or not we have to test with all the different data how the application is going to behave all the possible data that a user can enter we should consider all that data and using all that data we got to test our application okay in the equivalence class partition now the name itself is suggesting that it is a partition so I make two partitions here valid data invalid data two partitions okay now tell me what is valid and what is invalid a to Z uppercase is it valid or invalid tell me is it valid or invalid exactly it is invalid data because it is uppercase only the lowercase letters are acceptable over here but the user can enter the invalid also so I mean A to Z uppercase also we are putting it on the other side what about this A to Z lowercase valid or invalid exactly so where do we put it here okay and then what about this 0 to 9 we put it on this side what about the special characters which includes the space also it's not valid I put it here he can leave the username blank and then he can click on the sign in button right there are very much possibilities so in case he leaves the username as blank it comes on this side username is blank so do you see what we did over here we made a table wherein we are clearly defining what is a valid data what is the invalid data valid data means in case the user enters this side I mean the valid data we are going to allow him to log in into the account if he enters anything from this side that is invalid we are going to stop him from entering into the account clear everybody yes okay next we will come to the boundary value analysis now it is said that the 4 to 8 characters is a range which is acceptable now who knows how many uh, you know characters he can enter he can enter 10 character 50 character 20 character so what are the different characters are we going to test can you tell me should we test for one character two character three character four character how many number of characters are you going to test is there a limit for that okay 4 to character is you know 4 to 8 is valid okay but he can enter even more than that 10 characters 20 characters he can enter any number of characters 3 characters 2 characters anything he can enter so how many characters are we really going to test is it like you know 1 to infinity so many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are 
you will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com on our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are the courses that we offer what each course covers also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class the demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information if you still have more questions please feel free to call us call us at 770 Seven 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 one two six nine. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at zero two zero three three seven one seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.